welcome to KK Readings. Let's read together. You Are Kind by Michael Jordan Illustrated by Lax Lauren One morning, Mom told Josh they could not go to the park to play. I have lots of rains to run, so we have a busy day. I don't mind at all, Mama. I'll be your helper, Josh said. You are so kind, Mom smiled and kissed him on his head. As Josh sat in a special seat in the back seat of the car, Mom said, Our first stop is in the dry cleaners. It's now very far. Josh was quiet as they drove and then asked, What does kind mean? Is it something you be or something you do? Can kind be seen? Lots of great questions, Josh. Kindness can be many things, Mom said. Before I answer, let me give you an example instead. At the dry cleaners, Mom and Josh walked toward the store. A lady with a stroller was struggling with the door. Mom held it open so the lady and her baby could get through. Holding doors for others, Mom said, is a kind thing to do. Doing things for others make the world a nicer place to be. Helping is an act of kindness. It's something you can see. When they left the dry cleaners, Mom searched in her purse for her keys and walked straight into a lady that she didn't see. Oh dear, I'm so sorry, Mom said, her face turning red. When you make a mistake, Josh, it's kind to apologize, she said. Mom pulled into the parking lot where they would get groceries. Josh, would you like to push the cart? It would be very helpful to me. I would, but I don't, I don't think I'm very strong enough. Josh, sat, well, Josh said with a sign, You can do anything you put your mind to. Just give it a try. Josh pushed it all the way to the door and felt full of pride. I knew you could do it, Mom said as Josh pushed the cart inside. Giving encouragement is an act of kindness all of us need. When we're struggling, it can be the thing that helps us succeed. Inside, Josh helped a little boy who tripped and hurt his knee. I helped him, Mom, because I'd want the same if that happened to me. That's empathy you are feeling, Josh. It's kindness too. You used your imagination and found a helpful thing to do. Later, Mom said, always take care of yourself. Do what's good for you. It's important to be kind to others and to yourself too. Forgive yourself when you're not the person you want to be. That's an important act of kindness. It will keep you happy. At home, the family post sticky notes on the kitchen door. They filled their notes with all the things they were thankful for. Mom said, we'll add it to whenever we have something new. Espe expressing gratitude to each other is an act of kindness too. The end. The Classroom Play Story by Jenny Gilds Illustrations by Naomi Carolyn Lewis Miss Hill looked at the children in her class. She said to Emma, You can be Little Red Riding Hood in her play. Emma smiled at her brother brother Matthew, who was sitting beside her. I hope I can be the big bad wolf, said Matthew. But Miss Hill picked Sam to be the wolf. Matthew was not happy. Miss Hill said, you can take your books home and practice to play. The children from room 10 will be coming to see it in the morning. After school, 
Emma took her book out of her bag. Then she said, "Can you help me practice to play, Matthew?" But Matthew was still not feeling very happy. I want you to be the wolf," he said. "Oh, please," Matthew said. "Emma, I need you to help me." Matthew took the book and started to read. Then he ran out of the room. Emma watched him go. Matthew came back with a floppy white hat on his head. He had a blanket too. He lay down and pulled the blanket up to his chin. I'm the wolf in Grandma's bed," he said. Emma started to laugh. The twins practiced to play together. Matthew liked being the wolf. He jumped off the couch and chased Emma around the room. The blanket fell on off him. But he still had the floppy hat on him. Emma laughed so much that she couldn't talk. When the twins got to school the next morning, Miss Hill said, "We can't do the play today. Sam isn't coming to school, so we don't have a wolf." I'm sorry, children. Emma said, "Matthew can be the wolf." He helped me with the play last night. He was a good wolf. The children loved the play. They cheered when Matthew jumped up and chased Emma around the classroom. Everyone said that Matthew was a very good wolf. The end. Gossy by Olivier Denria. This is Gossy. Gossy is a gosling. A small yellow gosling who likes to wear bright red boots every day. She wears them when she eats. She wears them when she sleeps. She wears them when she rides. She wears them when she hides. But what Gossie really loves is to wear her bright red boots when she goes for walks every day. She walks backward. She walks forward. She walks uphill. She walks downhill. She walks in the rain. She walks in the snow. Gossie loves to wear her bright red boots every day. One morning, Gossie could not find her bright red boots. She looked everywhere: under the bed, over the wall, in the barn, under the hens. Gossie looked and looked for her bright red boots. They were gone. Gossie was heartbroken. Then she saw them. They were walking on someone else's feet. Great boots," said Gertie. Gossie smiled. Gossie is a gosling, a small yellow gosling who likes to wear bright red boots almost every day. The end. Glorious Porridge, a fun story from Africa, by Elizabeth Laird and Toby Newsom. Glory was making porridge. Her cat was watching her. I like porridge, he said, winding his tail round Gloria's legs. Well, I'm sorry, cat, but you can't have any. Said Gloria, "I'm hungry, and I'm going to eat it all myself." The porridge took a long time to cook. It's too sticky," said Gloria. "It needs more water." She picked up her bucket and ran down to the stream to get some water. The cat crept up to the porridge pot. It looks very good," he thought. "I'll just lick a bit of the spoon." The porridge tastes so delicious, delicious that he ate some more, and then a bit more, and a bit more. After that, until all the porridge was gone. Soon, Gloria came back from the stream with her bucket of water. Oh, what's this? She cried. My porridge pot is empty.
The cat was washing the porridge off his whiskers. You see, it was like this, Gloria, he began to explain. But Gloria wouldn't listen. She frowned and shook her spoon at him. The cat was scared of Gloria's spoon. He ran out of the house with a loud meow and jumped onto the back of the donkey who was having a nap underneath the tree. Meow? E-O-O-I, you're tickling me, laughed the donkey, and he began to frisk about all over the place, shaking the tree t till the leaves all rustled. Up in the tree, the bees in the beehive were busy making honey. Why is everything shaking? They hummed. Buzz, um, they buzzed. They flew down out of the tree and zoomed about in a panic. The hen was laying out her corn on a mat to dry. Squawk, squawk, cluck, cluck, she cackled. Here come the bees. What if they sting me? She flapped her wings in fright, scattering her corn everywhere. Oh, what a fuss! Oh, what a bother! Gloria was shouting and the cat was meowing and the donkey was braying and the bees were buzzing and the hen was clucking. The fox was passing by. What's going on here? She asked. Everyone stopped and looked at each other. The bee frightened me and made me flap my wings said the hen, and my coin flew about all over the place, and now I've got to pick it up all uh, up again. We didn't mean to scare the hen, said the bees, but the tree started shaking, so we flew out of our beehive. I shook the tree, said the donkey. The cat tickled me and made me laugh and jump about. I was running away from Gloria, said the cat. I was scared because she was shaking her spoon at me. Yes, because you ate all my porridge, said Gloria. But I'd been chasing mice for you, said the cat. So I was hungry too. Never mind all that, said the fox. What are you going to do now? Everyone looked at each other. I'll go pack back to picking up my corn, said the hen. And we got our honey to look after, said the bees. I, de I need another nap, said the donkey. I'll say sorry to Gloria, said the cat, because I ate up all the porridge. And I'll say sorry too, said Gloria, because I was too gr greedy to give and need to my cat. So off went the hen and the bees and the donkey and Gloria who made another pot of porridge. When it was cooked, she gave some to the cat who wasn't quite full. And after they eaten it all up, they sat down under the tree for a rest. And the cat climbed on to Gloria's knee, and she stroked and stroked him, and everyone fell fast asleep. But the fox just smiled as clever smile and went on her way. The End How to Catch Santa Claus by Alice Wellstead and Andy Elkerton. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, the children have set traps and not for a mouse. This makes sense to me. Yes, I understand why. I'm a holiday legend with reindeer that fly. As much as I want to stay for a while, I have stops around the world tonight. 
I'd love to talk to each child there is, but these toys need home by daylight. You're all so smart and clever, and the tracks do look fun, but I can't get too distracted. There's a lot of work to be done. I love Christmas flowers. They grow at the North Pole, but I don't need to take these. It's time for me to roll. The tree looks so festive and cozy in this nook. The room is all decked out, but an odd place to put a book. Hope the presents bring joy. I've added gifts to each list because surprises are important. I call it my gift checklist twist. I bet no one knows about the magic key that I don't show. I can't walk I can walk from house to house to come in and then to go. The trap full the reindeer and elf you don't get to smirk. Other plots are snagged Sure snagged you. I hope kids don't know this works. We've got to keep moving, but I will pause for a snack. Can't sit in the chair, thought. There's a toy sack to unpack. Those cookies were good, and no traps did I spy. Time to call the sleigh team. We're almost ready to fly. Oh my, this is impressive. It must have taken hours. But if I'm being honest, I prefer the trap of flowers. There's one thing that's true. These toys go under the tree. I just can't see how to do that. So I'm sending you and not me. How did we get out, you asked. It looked like we were done for. Santa's magic is very real, and I cannot reveal more. I love this visit, but I'm done for done here tonight. I'll be back next year. Time to fly out of sight. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. It's Christmas Eve. I'm almost there. I know you hatched a plan. So when you hear my ho, 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 try to catch me if you can. The end. When I am angry. Written by Michael Gordon. Illustrated by Max Lauren. As you may or may not know, it's not fun feeling mad. It's even worse when you're angry with your mom or your dad. So, when anger comes around and wants to ruin your day, get rid of it fast so you can continue to play. For the most part, Josh was sweet and as fun as can be, except when he lost his temper, which was often, you see. Today's anger mood started just after morning play. Josh wanted cake before lunch, but his mom said, No way! Josh started to breathe heavily, his heart beating fast. He gritted his teeth and hoped the feeling wouldn't last. Mom taught Josh a trick to stop anger from ruining his day. But Ted anger is a ball and throw that ball far away. Josh threw three big balls of anger as far as he could. Before long, it was all gone and Josh was feeling good. He sat down and ate lunch and had cake when he was done. Mom was proud that Josh had battled his anger and won. When Josh was at the park with his sister later that day, they saw a black cat, a black and white cat that mom said was a stray. Josh wanted to keep the cat and take it home with them all. When mom said no, 
just got angry. He threw an anger ball. Oak thought it made him feel better. He was still really mad. So his sister suggested a trick she learned from their dad. Dad said when you feel so angry that you just want to shout, take a deep breath, count to four, and then let it all out. One, two, three, four. This worked well for Josh. Soon, he was back enjoying his day. Until he was in the front yard later, trying to play. Some big boys were heading to the park to play the sun. Josh wanted to go with them. He thought it would be fun. Dad said Josh wasn't big enough to leave his parents' sight. Josh felt angry. He clenched his fist and his chest felt tight. He tried all the tricks but he couldn't manage it alone. So Dad breathed with him until he could do it on his own. The next day, while out shopping, Josh wanted a new toy. When Mom said, not today, he became an angry little boy. He yelled, cried, kicked, and stomped. He made a huge scene in the store. Mom took him out quickly and set him on the floor. They took lots of deep breaths and made balls of anger to throw. Josh threw a lot of balls before his anger started to go. It's fun to be angry, Mom said, but don't let it ruin your day. I'm proud of how you calmed down by sending anger away. The end. Encanto. Family is everything. This is Mirabel Madrigal. She is kind and funny, and she loves her family. Her family lives in a magical home named Casita. Mirabel has two older sisters. Luisa is strong. Isabella can make flowers. She is perfect. She and Mirabel do not get along. Mirabelle is the only one who does not have a magical gift. Her mom worries that she feels left out. Mirabelle is still special. Abula looks out for the family and the magic of Casita. One night, Mirabelle overhears Abula. Abula says the magic of Casita is dying. Bruno is Mirabel's uncle. He can see the future. He saw the magic dying. Mirabel thinks Luisa knows about Bruno's vision. But Luisa is upset. Everyone wants her help. Mirabel listens to Luisa. Luisa feels better. She tells Mirabel to check Bruno's tower for the missing vision. Mirabel finds the pieces of Bruno's vision is at the She's at the center. Mirabel finds Bruno hiding inside Casita. Bruno finishes his vision. It shows her and Isabella. Mirabel needs to embrace her sister. Isabella tells Mirabel that being perfect is hard. She makes a cactus. There is more to her than pretty flowers. Casita cracks. Abuela says Mirabel is causing the magic to die. But Mirabel says it is Abuela's fault. Abuela expects too much. Casita falls apart. Abuela finds Mirabel by the river. Abuela is sorry. It's her fault, not Mirabel's. Abuela says Mirabel sees the best in the family. They rebuild Casita. The magic returns. The family Madrigal is closer than ever. The end.
Fox Gives Thanks, written by Erin Rose Wadge, illustrated by John John Badgett. Stepping softly through the wood, there comes a fuzzy fox. She crunches fallen leaves and hops along the mossy rocks. Winter's on its way, thinks Fox. I'll need to fill my tummy, so I will stuff this sack with any food I find that's yummy. In the meadow, fresh and sweet, Fox sniffs some juicy berries. She spots some tasty acorns, too, and picks all she can carry. This food will keep me fed, thinks Fox. Through winter, cold and long, she, then she turns back toward the wood, whistling a winter song. Scritch! As Fox walks home, she meets a clever hedgehog by a brook. He is busy counting feathers, and Fox stops to have a look. Why, hedgehog, Fox declares, I'd be home fast as fast can be if my sack were just as light as these feathers. One, two, three. Fox ambles on and comes across a mighty caribou. She holds pumpkins with her antlers and some toadstools, red and blue. Oh, caribou, says Fox, I wish that I were big and strong. Although my heavy sack feels lighter as I walk along. When Fox stops next, she meets a brown squirrel digging in the ground. And close to, to squirrel sits a heap of acorns he has found. Squirrel, my friend, says Fox, the hole seems damp and unprotected. My trusty sack is the safest place for acorns I've collected. Soon Fox hears a soft kerplunk and says, what can that be? She gasses up and spies a raccoon resting in a tree. Hello, raccoon says Fox, have you dropped something that you need? She shakes her head, so Fox tre treads on, pleased with her good deed. By the time Fox reaches home, the moon is in the sky. She finds her sack is strangely light, then heaves a heavy sigh. My food has fallen out, thinks Fox. My day has been waste. Not one acorn, nor one berry, not one teensy tiny taste. Suddenly, Fox hears a knock, knock, knocking at her door. Her friends are here with all the food she dropped, plus even more. Welcome, friends, she says. Will you gather around my table as my way of giving thanks? Please eat all you are able. The end. Three Little Words by Amy Novesky, illustrated by Grace Lee. Hooray! It's a big day. You're off to sea. You're on your way. Wherever you go, Whatever you do, don't forget these three little words. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. When you find yourself swimming alone, just keep swimming. When you arrive at a crossroads, Look before you cross, then just keep swimming. When you don't know where you're going, keep your head up. You're bound to run into someone who can help you. When you don't know what you're looking for, just keep swimming. And when you do know, enjoy the ride. 
When you're surrounded by a bunch of crabs, don't let them get you down. When you make a friend, keep him forever. Even the crankiest septopus has a heart. Maybe even three. When you discover your destiny, just keep swimming beside her. If you ever lost your way, just call out to your friends. When you find yourself alone again, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep swimming until you find your way. You'll soon discover dreams come true. And when you find what you're looking for, remember the three little words. Just keep swimming. The end.